okay so in this video we are going to uh, see about public key certificate so the public key certificate of a user is essentially the public key of the user along with the name and id of that user and the hash value of all these three things all of these encrypted with the private key of the certifying authority okay so to keep it simple we can simply say a public key certificate of a user is the public key of the user encrypted with the private key of the certifying authority so to extract the public key of the user from the certificate one needs to use the public key of the certifying authority because since this was encrypted with the private key of the certifying authority it needs to be decrypted only with the public key of the certifying authority so decrypting the certificate with the pub public key of the certifying authority is not a problem everybody could know the public key of the certifying authority but the thing is only the certifying authority could encrypt this with his or her own private key nobody else knows should know the private key of the certifying authority and the way it works is every user who wants to communicate within a domain should uh, trust the uh, certifying authority for that domain so uh, if a sends his uh, public key certificate to b then uh, b can use the public keys of the certifying authority to decrypt the certificate and extract the public key of a and not only this once you extract the public key of a as well as the contents of the certificate what the receiver can do is the receiver can recompute the hash value of these three quantities and that hash value should match with what is here okay because nobody yeah, and because this is encrypted the whole thing is encrypted with the private key of certifying authority and nobody knows the private key of certifying authority when you decrypt and compute the hash value of these it should match with this okay so that's a way of verifying that uh, uh, it is indeed the public key of a and it is signed by the private key of certifying authority okay because somebody else could try to could get access to all this information the name id of a and the public key of a and compute the hash value of these three quantities but can they encrypt all these things with the private key of certifying authority no so nobody else other than certifying authority should be able to encrypt with his or her private key so that's the credibility so if the certifying authority has um, lost the private key or share the private key with other users then the certifying authority is no longer credible so there's an implicit assumption that everybody uh, like it's it's only the private certifying authority that knows the private key and nobody else knows the private key of the certifying authority so how would we send a message so when we want to send a message uh, from a to b using this public key certificate and make sure we have confidentiality integrity and authentication so that is this message m i can encrypt this message with as i show here with uh, the price so a is sending to b so we have a situation where a is sending to b so A can encrypt the message with the private key of A. So this will sound like a digital signature because only A could sign the message or encrypt it with his private key. So when when you send just this to B, B can decrypt this with what? The public key of A. Okay. So this provides a kind of a, um, authentication because uh, if you use a wrong key, you most likely will get a junk message as an outcome so if this was encrypted with the private key of some attackers at darth uh, and b decrypts that to the public key of a the message that b will see will mostly be a garbage so if you want to see a meaningful message you have to use the right public key to decrypt this message so since it was encrypted with the private key of a you have to use a public key of a to decrypt so it provides you some authentication but to decrypt this b should know the public key of a so typically a user does not uh, need to know the public key of everybody out there so that's the reason as a good practice you concatenate with this the public you don't send the public key as it is but you send the public key certificate of a so this is what you really send okay so you send the um encrypted message with the message encrypted with the private key of a along with the public key certificate of a 
So when B gets it, B has to first decrypt the public key certificate uh, of A with what? Because the public key certificate of A was encrypted with the private key of the certifying authority. So B has to decrypt this with the public key of the certifying authority. So decrypting with the public key of the certifying authority will get the will uh, reveal the public key of A to B. So B can then use that public key of A to decrypt this uh, part and extract the message. So now this provides authentication and um, uh, integrity. Now the problem is if um, someone gets access to this, everybody can go through this process because uh, all you need is a public key of the certificate authority which you know and you can decrypt and extract the message. So there's no confidentiality with this. So if you want to provide, so the first, this thing by itself provides um, authentication and integrity because nobody else could sign the message with the private key of the sender. But if you want confidentiality, you have to encrypt the whole thing uh, with the public key of the receiver B. So if I say this is say, uh, this is say some M1. So if you want uh, confidentiality, you have to encrypt this M1 with the public key of B and send it. So only B can decrypt with its private key and then extract M1 and then what it has to do with the M1, it has to first decrypt the certificate with the public key or certifying authority, extract the public key of A and then decrypt this part uh, with the public key of A and extract the actual message M. So doing this provides you confidentiality because nobody else could now see what the message is. So that's what I illustrate here. So you have the message that we really want to send to B, you encrypt that to the private key of A and attached to this the public key certificate of A and the whole thing is encrypted with the uh, public key of B. I make sure I did tell the public key of B, right? So only B can now decrypt with its private key and see what the message is. Now the situation could arise where um, A and B are in two different domains and the certifying authority that A trusts may not be trusted by B. So we will see a situation where uh, <coughs> A trusts a certifying authority CA1 and B trusts a certifying authority a higher level to keep it simple. We will say B trusts a higher level certifying authority say CA2. So um, <coughs> which means in the previous case, I said B will decrypt the certificate of A, the public key certificate of A using the public keys uh, of the certifying authority who signed really for A. But in this case, B does not directly trust CA1, B trusts only CA2. B won't be able to use the public key of CA1 who really signed for A, the public, who really signed for the public key of A. So, you cannot just send like this, what you have to do is so you have to send along with this the public key certificate of CA1. So it's not sufficient to just send uh, up to this part. We have to append to this the public key certificate of CA1. The reason is it is CA1 who signed the public key of A and generated this public key certificate. And the public key certificate of CA1, the public key certificate of CA1. Uh, well, contains a public key of CA1, public key of CA1, signed by whom? Signed by CA2 with its private key. So to extract the public key of CA1, B has to use the public key of CA2 because the public key uh, certificate of CA1 uh, is signed by 
so this is the public key certificate of CA1 it was it is signed by CA2 with its private key so B has to first use the public key of CA2 to decrypt this and extract the public key of CA1 and using that public key of CA1 B can decrypt this portion and extract the public key of A and using that public key of A uh, B can go ahead and decrypt this portion and extract the uh, message that A really wanted to send to B so if you want to provide confidentiality put everything here uh, together and encrypt that with the public key of B so that only B can decrypt with its private key okay so we'll stop with this